You could put out a new email every hour. New leads equal more money every year, and referrals equal the same money every year. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Ricky Caruso. He is an investor, a speaker, and soon to be remembered, in my opinion, as a legend in the industry. The cool thing about what he was doing was he was documenting everything. Like he would post his calls, his work he was putting in, the strategies, he was sharing everything. You've got to focus on what's working and really go all in. The whole purpose is, is to collect your data. All you need is a small percentage. Normally, the, the, the equation is 1% of your database will close a deal every year. Learning how to expand our capacity. That's what's building your brand. It's an extension of who you are. No distractions, 100% committed. It's all about building that email database because that is your platform. You own the data. It's literally your Facebook. Because when you send the email at eight o'clock, you know it hit their inbox at eight o'clock. Ricky, what's going on, my man? Hey, what's up, guys? Can you hear me good? Good, good. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. All right, team. So uh, first off, I know uh, Ricky's been doing this for a very long time. I believe you started in when you were 20 in what, 2002, Ricky, if that's correct. Yeah. Right. Uh, 20 years old. I have some young guys in the room and young gals in the room. So I think your story is going to uh, marinate with them extremely well. 2017, you started your coaching program, right? That's right. I've right, given it out for free, basically. I don't think anybody gives you gives out more free content in the real estate than you. Right, Ricky? You claim that now, right? Yeah, for a while. <laughs> for a while. Yeah. This guy crushes it, man. So, hey, I appreciate you coming on, Ricky. Uh, the floor is yours, and if we have questions, we'll mute and do all that so we can ask questions to you as well, all right? Cool, cool. Are you, uh, how many of you guys are already following me to some extent? Here. I'd imagine more than half the room, and all of them okay, should be following cool. them soon enough. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Yeah, no, I, uh, honestly, I didn't even know, I don't know exactly how I can bring you guys the most value. I would imagine it would probably come from, you know, a little Q&A, understanding a little bit about your business and kind of what struggles you may be running into, um, whether that be, you know, marketing, admin, conversion, um, you know, lead gen, whatever the case may be, I'm happy to help there. So be thinking about what problems you're having in your business, because that's, that's, I feel like I have a gift um, of being able to, in a very short period of time, show an agent how they can double, triple their business. Um, I've helped the thousands of agents double and triple their business. And it really kind of comes from the fact that I'm not, I, there aren't, I don't have too many squirrels, if you know what I mean. Um, I don't really jump from thing to thing. And that's one of the biggest problems I think with agents is they jump from thing to thing. Um, you know, I built my entire business, um, circle prospecting, which everybody hates, uh, sending postcards and doing a weekly email. And I just focused on that when social media came out, because when social media, started i was already in the business for a good five ten years um there was no social media when i got started um there was no zillow there wasn't you know any of these platforms and when it came out i pretty much ignored it um because i was focused on what i was doing and uh plus i actually was one of the first people in my space and as it kind of went away really fast i thought oh, okay social medias are like this fad that aren't going to really uh, you know, everyone, you know, I kind of thought, well, they're all going to crash and burn just like it did. Well, I was wrong about that, but that's okay because, um, I focused on what was working and that's, that's one thing I really want you guys to get out of this today is that you've got to focus on what's working and really go all in and just eliminate everything else. The problem is we're, um, we're worried about the business we might lose if we don't do everything. Um, you know, like, let's just say, for example, like for me, for example, I, I didn't use social media at all to build my real estate business. Um, but I knew I was losing business there. Okay. I knew I was losing business by not using it to build my real estate business or not using it to try to, you know, uh, advertise my business or get leads. I knew I was losing business there, but I was okay sacrificing that business I was losing because I was all in here and you can only do as much as you can do. We all have to figure out how much we can handle and then stay at that capacity. You know, like some people have two pending deals and four active listings and their week is shot. 
and I don't know what they do for 40 hours a week on two pending deals, but that they somehow they manage to waste their entire week on it. Whereas I would have 10 to 20 pending deals and 20 to 30 active listings at all times. And literally I was walking around like I had nothing to do. Um, it's about understanding how much you can handle and, and finding out what that sweet spot is behind the flow of the frequency of closings you want. And then learning how to maintain that, that level of momentum. Um, you can only do so much. That's why the business is unlimited. You know, I always say closings happen every day. Business is unlimited. Competition doesn't exist. It's because we can all ha only handle so much. So like fill up your cup, you know, have as much going on as you can handle and then stay there. I mean, that's the name of the game. And so I was doing that without doing social media. Like I was keeping my cup full and keeping 10 to 20 pending deals and 20 to 30 active listings without social. So I'm like, why am I going to add this, this, uh, extra thing in here that's going to take time away from this thing that I'm doing that's crushing. But most agents have so many squirrels. They're just jumping all over the place when they're not focusing on the two or three things that actually work. Everything works. You got to pick your poison, what you, you know, what you want to go all in on. Um, so that's super important. Um, but I don't know. I could jabber all day long. I'd really love to kind of get into your, your businesses a little bit and see what you guys are having trouble with. I, uh, I've done everything. Let's just say, okay. I've, I've had my own brokerage. I tried to build a team twice. I was uh, the number one agent in my market for eight years in a row. Number one for Remax. I did a hundred deals a year for eight years in a row. I wrote books. I have one of the most, probably the, one of the largest social media followings of agents in the world. So I've crushed social. I've built businesses on social. I travel and speak every week. I've probably done everything that any, you know, I, I'm a digital marketer. I was a cold caller, like you name it, I've done it. I lost everything. I slept in my car. I, you know, I was salesy. I was low. I've done everything. So there's nothing you can throw at me that I more than likely won't be able to shed some insight to help you become more efficient and double triple your business. So oh. If you want to, I'd love to hear, you know, if anybody has questions or what problems you're having in their business or, you know, what exactly I can help you with. 100% Ricky, let me give you kind of a little bit of the room and the backstory of the room a little bit for you. So uh, we've been in business as a brokerage for about five years. Right now we're at about 48 agents, about 200 transactions. Uh, we have team leaders in the room. We have brand new agents in the room. And we have team leaders that are growing their, their teams as well. So there's a lot going on in the room. So I think there's a lot of different topics you're going to be able to touch on today. Uh, we have podcasts and media. They have VA support, helping them out with email marketing and social media and everything else. So agents, you guys have one of the best guide coaches in the whole entire industry. This is not the time to be quiet. It's time to ask your questions. There's no dumb questions in the room. Give them one. I'll hit lead off. Hit lead off. Next, we hit lead off. Hey Ricky, um, quick question for for our new agents that are or the new agents that are coming in. You're big. I've been following you a long time, way back to you had one office and the assistant used to sit behind you on the videos while you cold called. Um, so I'm, my question for you is: your weekly email is one of your centerpieces that you stick to. Yeah. Uh, for newer agents in the industry, can you touch a little bit on content for that? Because we feel like sometimes mm -hmm. um, the wheels start to spin. You run out of things to present in that email. Can you got how do you keep that thing fresh? Well, I mean, do you think that, I mean, I'll just ask you a question for the people that kind of have trouble with this. Um, what do you think the most interesting data point is in the market, in the local real estate market for consumers? Home values. Home values? Great. Yeah, yeah. And what, what do you think is a driver of home values? Uh, inventory and probably interest rates. Yeah, inventory, right? And so what I'm saying is, is every single hour, every single minute, just about, I don't know, I don't know how big your market is, right? But every hour for sure, there's a few new listings, right? You could put out a new email every hour, which is, here's the, here's the, here's the new listings in the last hour. Your open rate would be crazy. And that's putting out an email every hour. 
think about it. There's new listings every hour. There's new closings every hour. There's new pending deals. You do, do you do you think that your that clients would just love to know what the new listings are the moment they come on the market and pendings and closings? Like there's like a constant flow of fresh data that your clients are very interested in every single hour. So all I'm saying is is do one a week. <laughs> you could do one every day for sure, and it would be interesting once a week. Um, if you're having trouble with this, you could literally be uh, the the new listing um, agent. Right, every week it's just like uh, you know Ricky's new listings. Uh, like you know, like uh, I don't know what market. You, what what market are you guys in? Hey, Ricky. Where is it? Yeah. In the Bay Area, California, East Coast. Oh, okay. Coast. You'd be like bait, like new listings in Bay Area, you know, and the date every week. And like they click, they and you're just like, hey, hope you're having a great week. Here are the new listings. You know, I especially like the one on Rosemary Street. Check them out right here. Let me know if you see something you like. That could literally be your weekly email every week, and people would open it. Right. And um, that whole thing about the one on like Rosemary Street is I really like this one. Adding things in there out of your mind that adds the uh, the personableness, the your personality into the 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 email because most everybody's doing like these cold email, like they're doing drips. So you like get the criteria, you put an MLS or whatever, and like it just spits out you know listings. It goes to the goes to the client. With it's just completely cold. Like the 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 client knows it's a robot. They know it's a robot. They know you didn't spend a second on that. And they're lit. And like if you did, if you do one of those like customized notes, it's the same note every time. So they eventually, even if they think the first one was really you, they know by the second or third one it wasn't. And, and, and it was just like they they're like they've getting that from like three or four other agents. And so this is the trap we run into. We uh we think that like drips work. And we think that um hiring a company to do the emails with generic information that sucks works. And we're really just completely demolishing our brand. Drips are great. If you've got like if you've got the weekly email going out say every Wednesday and it's giving people your opinions on stuff. And then you've got drips going out as listings hit the market on top of that. Awesome. That's great. But if you're just doing the drips and you're giving them none of you, see, they want you. They get a million options of, of agents in the market. Okay. So now how are you going to stand out? And how are you going to be the one out of the millions of agents? How are you going to be the one that they're like, I want them. This is what you got to think about. Is it going to be, you know, one of the, you know, 20 who does the same drip to them? Or is it going to be the one that they know actually sits down and comes up with great content for them that they're interested in? It's going to be the one that comes out with great content every week that's different from all the other agents because it came out of their brain. It's consistently on the same day every week. And they're like, wow, this person's dependable, consistent, hardworking. This is the agent I want. Um, But back to your question, like, bro, like if you run out of content for an email, like what? There's so much content like Google Bay Area. Are you kidding me? Like there's so much like Google Bay Area real estate and click the news tab and just like. There's like 15 articles that were written in the last day about real estate in the Bay Area. Like it's crazy, right? Um, but every single email that I do has new listing links at the top, right? Where it's like the last week or two of new listings. They get that every week. It's a fresh picture at the top where they feel this freshness, high resolution, new picture of the area, a landmark of some sort, where they, they look at the picture and they say, oh, that's the bridge. That's the beach right there. Or this is that house. Or this is, they recognize it and they're like, oh, Bay Area, new listings. And then like the body which could be like restaurant of the month, deal of the month, news of the month, stats of the month. There's so much stuff. It's so easy. And you can scale it, right? So like if you think about database, okay, the size of your database dictates the size of your income. The reason why most of you make 
three hundred thousand a year forever and can't ever scale up. It's because you're living off past kinds of referrals, and you think any day your business is going to blow up when it's never going to. It's a mirage because you're doing deals, but you think, oh, I've got to, I got to hit four hundred one day. No, you're not. Not until you add more people into your sphere where you have more referrals coming in. The referrals just maintain the income; it doesn't grow it. Any referral you get, you need to be think, awesome. I'm still making the same amount of money this year. Any new leads you get, you're like, awesome. I'm going to make more money this year. That's what it is. New leads equal more money every year. And referrals equal the same money every year. Um, and so the size of your database dictates how much money you make. If your database is this size and it doesn't grow anymore and you get referrals out of this size database, then it's going to be the same amount of money every year. If you grow it every year, you'll make more and more money every year. And then eventually when you're making the amount of money you want to make, you can stop growing it and you just keep making that amount of money. Like you're going to grow up to 800000 a year. You grow it that much, which will take three, four, five, six, seven years. And when you get there, then you don't have to grow it anymore. You can literally quit prospecting, lead ginning, all that stuff, and just keep making 800 a year off the repeats and referrals if you're doing a weekly email the whole time and continuing to build the brand with these people where they never forget who you are. If you're not doing that, then the people you met six years ago, you hear what I'm saying? It takes six, seven years to get to like 500 to a million most of the time. Like I can tell you for a fact that you're going to get there if you do what I'm saying. And so if it takes five, six, seven years to get there, then what about the people you met? It, it only gets there if the people that you met five, six, seven years ago when you started remember who you are. People you met year two remember who you are. Remember you met year three remember who you are. If nothing's in place and these people are slowly forgetting who you are because your method is to call them, you can't scale that. You can't scale calling. You can't scale social media. Oh, yeah. You can't put your database into Facebook and make sure every single one of them see your content. You're at the mercy of Facebook, which only shows it to like 5% of your followers. And so social media as a whole, people, I mean, people crush it on social. Um, and what they do is, is, you know, they put out a lot of content. They get into a lot of DM conversations and that's kind of their database is the DMs. And they flip through their DMs and they DM people back and forth and, you know, they cultivate leads that way. That's a great way to do it. It's awesome. Everybody has to, again, everything works. You got to find out what you, you know, what works for you and go, go for it. Uh, but for me, I would be using social media for exactly what I use it for now. You guys see me posting stuff. The whole purpose is, is to collect your data. So like if you start following me, you know, you'll Instagram will show you my content for a couple of weeks, if that. And then if you don't start engaging with my content, guess what Instagram is going to do? It's going to quit showing you my content. You're still going to be following me, but you're not going to see my content ever. Why? Because the feed is this big and you can only see so many pieces of content. And if they know that you're not engaging with my content, they're going to stop making my content be one of the 10 pieces of content you see every time you start scrolling, right? You guys see people that you're following that you don't see their content anymore. And then you see their content, like Instagram will just randomly show you something that they, that, you know, a piece of content they did, you know, in six months. And you're like, oh, I forgot about that guy. Wonder what he's been up to, whatever, right? Same thing's happening to you. And so what you have is this cycle of people that come into your, your social media ecosystem. And it's like a, you know, whatever, a couple week cycle where, you may be getting the same amount of views all the time, but it's a different group of people every couple weeks. And the people that started following you that saw your content for a couple weeks, they don't see it anymore. So what you got to do is you got to get their data while they're hot. As soon as they start following you, you need to reach out to them, look at their profile, see that they work at this restaurant and DM them and say, hey, I see you. <laughs> Thanks for following me. I see you work at wherever. Nice to meet you. I'm in real estate. You know, how you doing today? And see if you can get into a back and forth and eventually get to a place where you're looking to buy or sell a home. No, cool. I'd love to work with you later. Is it okay if I stay in touch? Cool. What's a good email? Bam. But you got to get them while they're kind of in that cycle where they followed and they're kind of looking at your stuff because after a couple of weeks, they're not going to see your stuff anymore. Back to what I was saying, that's not a good place to like make sure people never forget who you are because all of you know people you're following that you don't see their content. So calling's not scalable. Social media is great for like lead gen, but in my opinion, not great for long-term like 
relationship building necessarily. Um, so you like have to understand all these different platforms and what they're good for, and then kind of get them all working together, you know, for the greater good. When you have the email and cell phone, that's your data. That's your database. That's your social media platform. That's yours. Now you can use that to make sure that they see you every week. You're not at the mercy of an algorithm. And now we scale that to 20,000, 10,000, 8,000, right? Now we have a business. And that's how you get to, you know, four, five, six, seven hundred, eight hundred, a million, two million a year in commissions is by building your own platform. And every time I t take a sip of Fresca, every time I take a sip of this, I get a new listing. <laughs> uh, I love it. I love it. Um, thank you for that. Um, and they have access to email marketing too, which is nice. Um, they also I didn't mention they have a whole full video studio. They can shoot video content as well. So uh, there's lots of options there too. Any other questions you guys have? Um, what? Should I? Ricky. Um, my name is Brandon. I'm actually a guest here. Um, yeah, I just want to spotlight. I followed you and you reached out to me with a personal message saying, Hey, how you're doing? I thought that was pretty impressive. Most internet personalities don't do that. So the fact that you had a bandwidth to do that was impressive to me. Um, two part question, your email, obviously you have a template, right? You're, you're sounds like you're plugging these fresh, you know, images and stuff into a template. And if you do, is it like a constant contact type of template? Or do you try and make it to where it doesn't look like a, a computer's, you know, putting it out there? Um, yeah. I mean, you never want you you always want it to have a feel that see, people know it's a bulk message, right? They know you send it to everybody. But when they read it, they almost kind of like, but did he send this to me directly? Because it sounds so authentic, right? And it's got so much personality behind it. Like he like People can tell that there was time spent. Um, let me go. I'll show you guys this. Okay. You guys can actually go here and see every email I did for the last year. So I've been doing this email since 2007. Think about that. Um, 20,000 people get it. About 7,500 open it every every single week. Think about that. Um. But anyway, there's this link here, and you guys can see this? Yeah. Okay, so there's training here where I screen share and actually build an email for you and talk about it. Um, but down here is every email I did for the last year. Um, this was deal of the month. Let's see what picture's not popping up on that one. Let's see. Oh, there we go um see different high resolution picture new listings you know like i wrote all this i wrote all this um and all this is always the same every week let's go to a more recent one uh this is one where i gave away a hundred dollar gift card to a restaurant high resolution picture new condo listings and stuff i wrote all this um so this is basically what it looks like um, there, I have a four week template system right here with constant contacts where you just plug and play deal of the month, restaurant of the month, stats of the month, news of the month makes it really simple for you. Um, but you guys can go to zero to diamond.com and you can join this for free. And right here at zero to diamond.com, you create an account. I've got all my scripts and email templates right here. So this is all my scripts right here my unique scripts that I came up with after making 100,000 calls. And then all those emails are right here. You can go right here. It's just scripts and email templates at zero to diamond.com. You can go there and get all that stuff for free and uh, get the four week template system right here and see all the emails right there. Just go there and watch this training and just th this needs to be the literal like foundation of your business. If you don't have anything, in, like I would ask you, like, what are you doing to stay in touch with your database? Like uh, most of you aren't doing much or you're just calling or texting, right? Um, but if you would actually have a system put in place where everyone you talk to, you know, are, are, is never going to forget who you are. 
Now it's just gangbusters. You just talk to as many people as you can to get them in there, make great first impressions, and then like all you need is a small percentage. Normally, the 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 equation is one percent of your database will close a deal every year. So like if you have ten thousand in there, you're gonna do a hundred deals a year with no cold calling, no lead gen, no Zillow, no social media, no nothing, just the weekly email, and the referrals and past clients and referrals of referrals come in, close a hundred deals a year. I know people with five thousand people, they close fifty deals a year. It's a 1% rule when it comes to this. You just build this up to the level you want, how many ever deals you want, and then you're done. You don't have to prospect anymore, right? So that this the whole your whole career is stages. You know, you're in the building stage, you're in the servicing stage, you, now you're to push it to the get to exactly where you want income level stage, then you're at the no prospecting stage where you're still closing the same amount of deals, then you're like, how do I pivot? Where do I go because this is a rat race? You know, this is wild. I've been showing property for 12 years now. This is getting nuts. And you and you start to like find your way out of out of this. Um, that's 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 the path. And for people, I mean, listen, I watched guys that were 80 years old die making cold calls. Um, they didn't they didn't have social media. There's so many opportunities now that you can pivot. Um you know, I think, wow, you know, there wasn't social media when I when I started. And uh, I just remember those days. And it's just now it seems so long. It's so long ago. And I'm just like, man, I can't imagine my life without ha having the uh, opportunity to build the businesses that I have after real estate. Um, it's just I can't even put it into words how big it is, how incredible it is. Um, but anyway, go to zero to diamond.com and pull up those, uh, emails and, uh, just copy what I'm doing. R and D my friend, R and D. I'm the two parts. Sorry. Two parts. Yeah. Second part. Ricky, you always kind of talked about how you, uh, had not, did not have a team for the longest time and you were out there just one man and, eight, and an assistant. Can you kind of speak to, you know, showing multiple buyers properties while handling, you know, pending listings and. Well, you don't really do much to handle listings. Um, yeah. Other people are showing them for you and selling them. Um, multiple buyers, yeah, just set it up and show them what. What's what? I guess I'm looking for the problem. Yeah, I, I guess I guess scale. I guess it would be scaling. You know, um, scaling. I think I think every a lot of agents, most agents, eighty percent of agents struggle uh, with working on um on their business instead of in their business right that's always the big pitfall so continuing to uh curate you know leads while showing property while putting out fires on those listings um it would be perfect if they always just sold themselves and didn't need to be maintained but i don't i don't think that's really true and checking in with those clients um maybe that's not how you operate and no, no, so no, I, guess I absolutely operate that way. I would call my clients every week and check on them about uh, their listings, whether they've been shown or not. I would always do a weekly check in. I would set aside a day, normally, you know, an hour or two uh, a day. I would time block that from the beginning of the week to sit down and call everybody I had a property listed with. Normally I had 20 to 30. Uh, and most of those I, I'm already in contact with a lot anyway. So I don't have to call every single one of them because I'm already talking to them on a daily basis for whatever reason, showings or we have it under contract or whatever the case may be. Um, but it, it, the thing about it is, is it comes back to what I was originally talking about with squirrels and capacity. Okay. Like I said, some agents have two pending deals and four active listings and their week is shot. You guys know who I'm talking about, right? You may be looking around thinking about people in the room right now. What I'm saying is, is that I can handle a lot. And the, and the way that I handle a lot is I basically ignore a lot. And I know I, I, I realized how, when to be worried about something and when to realize that what, uh, you know, something that a lot of people worry about isn't worth worrying about because it takes up capacity. So what happens is, is the people that it take that, you know, they take two pending deals and four active listings in their weakest shot. It's because the reason that's their capacity is because they're filling up their capacity with worry. And I felt my capacity up with where's my next fucking deal coming from. That's all I was worried about. 
And so when I list a property, I do forget about it. I did my job. I got it on the market. I call the seller once a week. My assistant gets the agents in to show. I don't have to worry about that part of, of it. You know, what fire could pop up on a listing? I could pop up out oh, there. Are you asking me what fire could pop up? Yeah, what fire could pop up? Oh, I don't know. Buyers here freaking let the cats out and, uh, you know, uh, left our heat on, water. I mean, I literally had Great. to inspect uh, the uh, Christy, Christy, go over there right now and lock the door. What's another fire? Who's Christy? I don't have a Christy. My, my assistant. Okay. Yeah. So give me one of those. All right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So like that's step one. If you want to do a hundred deals a year, you have to have an assistant that handles everything on the back end. You have to, you can't, you can't do a hundred deals a year doing the admin and going and locking the doors because buyers let a cat out and doing all that stuff. You can't, it's not going to happen. That may be what the problem is right there. Um, anybody else? Take no, I'd like to stay here for a second. I want to hear more. Oh. Like I want to, I want to make sure that we're good. I can't see you. Oh. I don't, I don't know who I'm talking oh. to, but I want to. I'll be too close. Sorry. I'll, I'll tag. I'll tag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. We want to get more questions in. So go ahead. Yeah, I don't want to take up too much time. Do you want? Uh, no. I mean, I think. Yeah, I think that. <clears throat> like so. I'm like around 30 deals a year, right? So I'm I can't really I'm not really justifying on my average uh, uh price point uh an assistant. And I think that's okay. just hesitant to take the leap to hire that person. And you know, a um, great assist a great assistant doubles your business overnight. So yeah. you go from 30 to 60 day one. Why? Because you spend half your time right now, let's say 50% dealing with the stuff that your assistant's gonna take over. So 50%, right? The other 50% is spent actually making money in front of clients, showings, listings, phone calls, following up, doing the things that actually make money. So just think if you doubled, because if you're doing it 50 now, let's say you're doing it 100% money-making activities, you just doubled your money-making activity time. So what does that do? It doubles your income. You literally go from 30 to 60 day one. Now, will it take you 30 days to train her and make sure you're on the same page and get in the, in the flow? Yeah. Yeah, it will. But, but dude, like literally I would get a call from a client. We work a deal out on the phone. We're going to list the property. I literally text my assistant, the property, the seller's name, the email, the phone number, the price, the commission. Okay. And I just say new listing. What does she do? She takes it. She docu signs it. It comes back. She orders pictures. It comes back. She puts it on MLS. It comes back. She sets up showings with agents. I text her one quick little text and I never hear another peep out of it until an offer is made. What does that allow me to do? Go get more listings. And I'm just stacking while she's closing. She's servicing. She's getting the signatures. She's ordering pictures, putting it on MLS, setting up all the showings. I don't hear a word about it. Not a peep until an offer is made. Every week I'll call the seller and say, hey, because because the feedback will be right there. I'll pull up the showing time and I'll see all the feedback, how many times it's been shown. I'll call the seller and say, hey, we've shown it. I'll look and see if anything's changed in the market in the subdivision. If anything new went on the market, if something went under contract, if something's closed, I'll make sure I'm good there. I'll call the seller and say, hey, a, a listing popped up and went under contract in a day. It's priced 10,000 below yours. We've been shown six times and you know two of them said it was overpriced, blah, blah, blah. Right. So I'll take a couple hours a week and call the sellers and give them an update. Outside of that, I don't hear anything until an offer's made. Literally just a text. And then I don't hear nothing for a couple weeks until the offer's made. Then I step back in, negotiate the deal, give it back to her. Now, you see how I can do 100 deals now? Sleeping all day? <laughs> I was literally working like 20 hours a week, bro. Right. 100 deals a year is two deals a week. Do you feel like you have the capacity to close two deals a week? Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Well, obviously, she was licensed, right? She's licensed. Yeah. 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 yeah she licensed. All day. I don't know if it's different in Alabama. Yeah. yeah. No, she has to be licensed <laughs> to write contracts and stuff. Same thing with um. Same thing with uh purchasers. You want to make an offer? Cool. Text her the buyer's name if they want an inspection, a financing, closing date. Boom. Done. 
submit to the, 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 I don't hear anything until we get a counter offer. It's a, it's efficiency, right? And then learning how to expand our capacity. Yeah. I guess we worry that you lose the personal touch, right? When it's where? not like, where, where, yeah. where do I lose the personal touch? No, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm speaking excuses out. Right. Like, no, no, I, think no, no. Like... I know, but I'm talking it through with you and I'm just wondering where in that process did I lose the personal touch? Cause my assistant never contacted the, the, the client at all. She never talked to him. Got it. Got it. I guess that's because, you know, a lot of people have their assistant is basically like texting for them. Right. No, they're not text. She doesn't text anybody. Not a single, not, she doesn't text anybody. She sent the DocuSign from my account, right. To them to sign the listing. That's all she did as far as the client's concerned. Yeah. I, I, any communication to the client is me. She doesn't call, text, nothing. It's all yeah. me. I call and give them the update on the market. If there's a problem, I'm the one calling and texting them, not her. If there's a problem, if she sees a problem, she calls me and says, hey, this is happening on this deal. I'm like, okay, cool. I got it. I'll call the seller and put the fire out. There's no personal touch loss. See, you, you got it. You got to, it's kind of like the weekly email, right? A lot of people are like, why don't you have somebody write that for you? And I'm like, that's the thing you can't let anyone else write because that that's your that is that is your entire like that's what's building your brand. It's an extension of who you are. Okay? It's it's the impression that your clients have of you and how you're going to operate and how you're going to work and get to know you more through that because you can't call them every week, right? This is the only way you can do this at scale. I I still write the, even though I'm out of production for 2 years. My dad handles all the listings and sales. I still write the email myself. That's the one thing that I still do in our real estate business. I'm not going to let that go. So you got to you got you got to know you know as you continue to grow, bro, you're going to realize the things that you can delegate that doesn't water down the personal touch. You know, like I'm never going to let a VA or a TC call my client Hell no. That's my client, and I'm going to deal with it. That's what they hired me for, is for me to be their agent, not my assistant to be their agent. So th those are the little things, like staying in front of people is where you make your money. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Ricky. If you want to hop in with a question for Ricky. Experienced agents, new agents, anybody? Yes, I will. Um, hi, Ricky. Tracy Nelson. Um, I just wanted to touch on that when in your business, because I'm the person that you're talking about that has a few pending and then a couple active listings. I had so, a um, <laughs> I saw the look on your face. And, I, I was like, <laughs> like, oh, shit. and then I just sleep, you know? Um, so <laughs> basically I, yeah, squirrel brain. Um, I basically am trying to build my team. Once again, I, I switch brokerages wow. over here. That's a big over, jump, right? Uh, like worried about two ago. pendings and like four listings, but you're building a team. Like I know it's a lot. Okay. Um, so I, I came over to E3 about six months ago. Um, I was with Keller Williams for 10 years. So I'm, you know, some of it's new to me here and, and just wanting to build a team. Um, I have a different mindset now, as far as that goes, how did you know when well, finding your assistant, right? Your licensed assistant, um, the first step when that was necessary and how did you kind of I guess the right steps in finding that right person. Um, mm. because I have had one in the past, didn't really work out. Um, um, she ended up just being a, a buyer's agent for a while, but anyhow, I I'm just trying to figure out those first steps to really finding the right person. Yeah. It's a great question. So what, what happens is as a single agent is, is we run into this bottleneck in our business. Okay. And then the pressure starts building up. And we know that whatever's bottlenecking our business is preventing us from growing anymore. And so that's the very first thing that we bring an assistant on is to take care of that bottleneck to open us up to where we can continue to grow. For me personally, it was when I had 30 active listings. So when I had 30 active listings, I was spending literally full time setting up showings for agents that wanted to show my listings. And I couldn't prospect anymore to continue to build my business. Literally, eight hours a day. It was just like one after another, people wanting to show my listings. And so for me, it's kind of a process because I'm in a vacation area. So I have to 
call the rental company. They call the renters. They ask if it's okay. They call the back. They call me. Then I call the, there was this whole long process, which is still kind of that way, even though we have showing time now, it's still a little bit that way. The agent puts in a showing request. We still have to reach out to the, yeah, it, anyway, it was a process, more of a process then than it is now. And so that was the first thing. And I was like, ah, okay. So I hired an assistant just to take that one task off of my shoulders to where I could continue to grow. Then once I got her in there and got her trained on that one thing, then I added another thing, right? Which was like, um, let's see, what was it? I think I was having her put things in MLS for me, listings in MLS. Then she started to learn transactions. Then I had her starting to do postcards and letters and then blah, blah, blah. Right. And so you start with the most important bottleneck that's really holding everything back right there. And then you kind of build from there. What the bottleneck is going to be for you. I don't know what it's going to be for her, for him. For, I don't know. Everybody's business is different, but you'll run into this roadblock where this activity is just really taking up all your time and it's not helping you grow your business. And that's what you bring. And that's when you know, okay, I got to have an assistant. I'm not growing anymore. And if your database isn't growing, that's when you're, that's when you know you're backing up. Right. Um, and so I went through, I want, I want to say I went through, I know for sure two, I want to say maybe three, but I think it was two. And the third one was the winner. And so the first one was just like, a friend from high school that it went pretty good for a while, but then it didn't go so great. The second one, which she was literally there a day, she was like, I can type 500 million words a minute. And then like, literally she was typing like this when she got in and I was like, okay, you're fired. <laughs> and, and, and then I, uh, and then I landed the one I have, which she was an assistant for a local broker already. So she already had experience with MLS, with transactions, with real estate. She already knew all the local agents. So it was kind of like a real slam dunk. So you may have to go through a couple. Um, I'll tell you what one of my mentors told me was um, slow to hire, quick to fire. So be slow with hiring. Make sure you're going through all this stuff and checking references and, you know, spending time with them and seeing if it's a good fit, talking about goals, setting expectations. Um, but the moment you realize this isn't a good fit, fire them quickly um, so that you can move on to somebody else and you'll, you'll find a fit, you know, it's, it's tough, but um, that it's part of it. You have to have someone really good. If you want to really explode uh, mine's still with me, this will be the 10th year um, that she's been with me. She does six figure. Um, so she has a really good spot because you know, what she does is really easy because I mean, we, when I was in production, we were doing 100 deals a year, literally standing on our head. Like, it's two deals a week. I mean, it was just nothing for us. It was just, like, easy. Like, we were never in a bind whatsoever. It was just you know, very, very, very easy. Um, and we were we were happy with that pace. It was just a good pace, you know. We were making a lot of money, and, um, you know, we were happy with uh, where we were. We didn't really have an aspire to – I didn't really have an aspire to go to 120 or 150 or 200 deals a year because, you know, I could see what kind of strain that would really be. So I just kind of pivoted into digital marketing. But um, yeah, I just, I can't imagine being in the building stage of my business, not even having an assistant and then even thinking that it's okay to start trying to build a team. I just, I can't even like fathom the thought process there at all. Well, why why would you want to, why, I mean, let me back up for a second because I figured I'd get a little different reaction. Why would you want to build a team right now? You've got a business to build. Why not build the business and then think about what you want to do? What's the goal with the team? Yeah, no, I, I think that, um, you know, I, I, I do know the assistant is step one. Um, I, I've done that before for sure. I know that's step one. Um, I think um, big picture, you know, I building team, right? Um, for me, it was just, hey, buyer's agent, doing a lot of the tasks that you already mentioned your assistant's doing. Uh -huh. So uh, I was thinking along the same lines as, as that. Um, the you. task of taking time away from me getting new business. I tried to build a team twice. And what I realized is that agents, you know, it, it's kind of weird because when agents join a team, their goal is to learn what they can learn and then move on to do it on their own. That's their right. whole goal with joining a team. But the team leader's goal, the team's goal 
is to retain them forever. And so it's like, it's a very confusing situation because even, you know, the agent has a completely different goal than the actual team. And most of them come and go really quickly, the future top producers. And they, you literally don't teach them anything because you're doing all the admin, lead gen, and marketing for them. So now they become dependent on you. They're not learning the tools they need to to go be successful as a single agent because you're not trying to teach them anything because you want them to stay on the team forever and stay dependent on the stuff and make money for the team. Um, and then, then when they do finally leave, they're basically starting over at square one because now they have to go learn lead gen, admin, and marketing because the team... A lot of money passively and uh off of other agents i um so the growth mindedness was there but it comes back to hey i'm a guy that was a single agent that sold 100 properties a year you know i i'm really good at handling a lot and becoming as efficient as possible so i just think a little differently in those terms so i guess i just have to go back to okay what is the goal with the team long term you know right. what am i trying to accomplish you know if it's to build this massive team where it's like a company within a company where I can eventually find a replacement and step out and still make a million bucks a year, you know, okay. Sounds like a lot of work to me. It could do it a lot easier just making a million bucks a year and keeping all the money, buying a bunch of rental properties. But again, I like to go to sleep at night without a worry in the world <laughs> where nobody's dependent on me for nothing, right? That's why I don't have any employees. I have the one assistant, but then I have like a multitude of businesses. I don't have a single employee. I go to sleep at night like a baby because nobody nobody's dependent on me for anything right and and that's that i have to i have to live with peace but i also want to make a million bucks a month so go figure <laughs> thank you i love it i love it um real quickly i know we only have a few more minutes left with you ricky but i know we talked to a lot of the more experienced agents in the room how about some new agents that just got licensed you know what would you recommend them doing every single day as a new agent right now currently in the market um, it's a loaded question because it comes down to like, are they part-time, full-time? Um, you know, like it, everybody's story is different, you know, for what they're good at and where they came from and what their background is. Are they young? Are they old? Do they have a past career? Um, there's so many things, you know, are they part-time, full-time? So there's a lot to unpack there, but Number one, especially for part-time agents, if you're not working real estate full-time, and if you are working full-time, then how are you paying your bills? Because as a new agent, you're not closing any deals, right? So there's another question. But you've got to, you've got to time, most agents newer, especially that aren't full-time, they don't really like time block when they're going to dedicate 100% to real estate. So they're just doing whatever, whenever. And because they're not dedicating any time to it, they don't really have a business. They're not, they just don't, they're just doing whatever, whenever. So you've got to sit down and say, okay, here are the hours on these days every week that I'm 100% focused on building my real estate business. And I'm going to get it during those hours. No distractions, 100% committed. That's the first step. Um, and then you got to try to figure out, okay, now what am I going to do during these hours? And then it comes down to, okay, my brand new license, because if so, I got a lot of post-license classes and stuff I got to do. So you need to spend 50% of your time doing that stuff. The other 50% needs to be on the phone. So I probably post once a day, which literally takes a second. There's two types of content. There's the content that you think about, you script out, you, you film, you edit, and you know it takes hours and hours to make one little piece of content. Then there's a piece of content where you literally just do something and post it in literally 60 seconds right? In the beginning, just do the 60 second content. That's the content that you make that's really fast, that doesn't take a bunch of time. Later on, when you've got time and you've built your business and stuff, and you want to do more elaborate and, you know, post-production stuff, awesome. But I wouldn't like spend hours and hours trying to edit videos and stuff, right? I would do the quick content, all right? And just, just for time's sake, right? Just post stuff. You know, once a day would be great just to kind of try to get some momentum going, right? So, okay, boom, there's 60 seconds. 
<laughs> 60 seconds every day taken care of. Now what are we going to do? We need to be talking to people, right? Start with your sphere, call your sphere, you know, ask how they're doing. Tell me in real estate, get their email, start your, e that's where you're going to start your weekly emails off your sphere. Get all their emails, get them in your database, boom, weekly email going. You can get that train rolling. Um, and then I think I would move as a new agent, I would move straight over to for sale by owners and uh, set appointments up to go look at the houses, right? And talk to them. Like, you know, how long are you going to try to sell this thing without an agent, you know, before you throw the towel in? Because 90% of them are going to list. And um, they just want to see if they can do it on their own. And they just want to give it a little time and see if it happens. If it happens, great. And so I'd follow up with those every week. Call them on Monday and say, how was your weekend? Do you have any showings? And like continue to build that relationship. Long term, I'm not, I hate for sale by owners, honestly. This is just new agent stuff. Um, but that's a good way to get some immediate, quick experience talking to property owners that want to sell, that don't have an, I mean, that's the quickest way you can get some real experience really fast. Um, and then I might move into expireds. Um, think I would think I would go that route, get 10 years worth of expireds and just call them all. Say, Hey, I see you were trying to sell this house at one point, whatever happened. Boom. It's easy as pie. You sell so many properties. Um, and then you can get into more like, like specific stuff. Like you've got a buyer for this neighborhood. You call the subdivision, right? Do a handwritten letter, hit them on social, call them. Hey, I'm the guy that wrote you the handwritten letter. Are you interested in possibly selling to my buyer or whatever? Um, or finding properties that are really good deals, rental properties. Maybe you have like a pocket listing or maybe you see a good rental property. Calling other people that own that type of rental property. Say, hey, I see you got this property. Would you want another one by chance? I got this other one that's really similar to, to yours. You know, I didn't know if you might want another one. And then you just get into this conversation. Maybe they want to sell that property. It's all about just you getting like finding excuses to talk to people. And then building the relationship on the conversation in a direction of you may or may not want to do nothing now, but I'd love to stay in touch with you. Is that okay? Cause I'd love to work with you later. Is it okay if I stay in touch? Good, cool. What's a good email. It's all about building that email database because that is your platform. You own the data. It's literally your Facebook. What's the motion that people make when they go on social media, the physical motion. Show me, show me. You, you pick up your phone. Everybody do this. I picked up my phone. I'm looking at I'm looking at social media. What am I doing? Rolling. Okay. Cool. Cool. Let's okay. Now we picked up our phone. Do it again. We picked up our phone and now we're looking at our email. What's the motion we're making? Reading. <laughs> is that the same motion or not? <laughs> it is. So what do we have here? We have our own social media platform where they're scrolling through the news feed, aka their inbox, looking for an interesting piece of content. It's the same thing. Now go out there and create. Everybody's like, I want to do social media. I'm like, great, we'll get a bunch of emails. No, I want to do social media. I'm like, no, email is social media. It's the best social media. Why? Because when you send the email, at 8 o'clock, you know it hit their inbox at 8 o'clock. When you post on Facebook, you don't know if they saw that, pe that piece of content. Only 5% of the people that are following you see that piece of content on average, let's say. 90% of the people in your database is going to see that email in their inbox. Whether they click on it or not, it's a different story, but they're going to see it. It's an impression. You know when you look at it, uh, the insights on Instagram and it shows you impressions? You know that number, th that word impressions? That means how many people saw it. They, they might not have double, double clicked it and liked it, but they saw it with their eyes. That means something. That means a lot. Like they, they may scroll through and see that you're doing an open house. They might have not have liked it, but they see you working. It means something. Even just because they didn't like it doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything. It means something. How many pieces of content that you actually like that you see on social that you don't actually hit the like button? Right? But you see it, you saw it, and you like you liked it in your mind. Like you watched it, 
you know, you, you enjoyed it, but you didn't hit the like button. It's the same thing. But you gave them an impression. So when people see it in the inbox of, your, of, your, of their email, they might not click it, but the impression meant something because they what? See you working. They see you sending it every Wednesday, and they're like, damn. They're dependable. That I trust them. If I can trust them to send me an email every week, I can trust them to sell my house. I'm not going to call Julie that sends it once a month. Fuck that. She's lazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what once a month email tells your clients. I'm lazy. And when you do it where another company is sending it for you, sending generic content, it it they they're they'll open it a couple of times and then they just, they won't open it anymore. Right. All right, Ricky, I want to respect your time, Ricky. Um, you look on my ability. Okay, I want to respect your time. Can we get one last question in, Ricky? That's okay? Yeah. Anybody else have one last question for Ricky? On Zoom, people on Zoom, want to ask a question? All right, I guess there's no more questions today. Um, Ricky, I, I, scared, have a I, I, I scared you guys enough today. Oh, no. <laughs> it's all good. But they follow you. They kind of know how you are, I would imagine. So I kind of knew what we were getting ourselves into. Um, the truth, high deep personality, lay it out there for everyone. So, hey, I appreciate, Ricky, everything you coming in, talking to the group, man. We'll have to do it again soon, all right? Okay, guys. I hope I, hope I helped you guys in some form or fashion. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Guys. Yeah. See you.